Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Analyze This, where we basically get to look at everything from business economy to finance. My name is Tunji Andrews and with me on the show is my co-host. I'm Arisa Ugu and today we'll be talking about raising funding for your small business in this economy. So the economy is quite a big topic right now, Tunji. Big, huge. Everyone's complaining about suffering, but you don't look like you're suffering. Uh, it's, um, it's packaging. As in correct packaging. I'm telling you. No, but seriously, though, inflation is in double digits. Unemployment is so high. People are really struggling. And I feel like entrepreneurship has become like the go-to solution for almost everyone. Even people who have nine to five businesses are looking for side hustles so mm -hmm. that they can make ends meet. But if you speak to one in three entrepreneurs, their biggest obstacle is always lack of access to finance. So why do you think that you know, debt is so expensive and equity is so difficult to find? I mean, let's, let's start with debt, right? It's, it's basic. Um, it's, it's about risk. Mm. I, I want to be able to give you money and know that I I'll will get be able to back. get my money back. And if I can't get my money back, at least I know where you live so I can come <laughs> and you know, get something off you to get, get my money back. So it's usually the fact that um, we don't have a proper uh, registry system Sis. in Nigeria. It's, it's growing. The CBN has just introduced one. And then the BVN is also supposed to help. But um, that is one part. But the other side, again, is businesses and their models, right? Mm. So there's one thing about you want to do, uh, you want to do a business. And there's another thing entirely if you want to hammer, right? <laughs> so there are businesses in Nigeria who, uh, or business people, entrepreneurs in Nigeria who just, because they can't find a job, they're looking to do a business so that they can fund their lifestyle. Yeah. They still want to go to clubs on Friday, you know, turn up, with spend a lot of money. money. Exactly, <laughs> with the bank's money. So, I mean, that's one issue. And every time you sit in front of a lender, he can hear what your underlining motives yeah. are. So, if he doesn't give you, maybe... There's a reason. But do you know what I think? I think that you can't talk about lack of access to finance in Nigeria and not talk about the two sides of it. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, the banks need to get more creative with the financial products that they offer because True. right now, finance is skewed to only one segment of the population. So basically, if you have money, you can get money. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have money, you are basically cut oh, out no. because you don't have collateral you can't meet a lot of the demands so they need to get more creative with their um, solutions but on the other hand i find that a lot of entrepreneurs that i speak to they say oh i need 10 million naira to raise my, to grow my business but they haven't really understood why they need that money so if you start getting to the nitty-gritty of why do you need the money for xyz business they have no justification for it so they can't tell me how it's going to improve their bottom line their revenue None of that. It's just, oh, it will grow my business. But a bank is a business. It needs to make exactly. money. <laughs> and and that's yeah. its own primary business, to lend you money exactly. and get back a profit. Even with investors, primarily what they want to know is, I'm going to give you money and I'm going to get a competitive return on my investment. So what's the risk? They need to know that you understand your business model, you know what your value proposition is, what's your customer acquisition strategy, You know what's the percentage, the market potential um, of that industry. industry. like But most entrepreneurs don't do the work. They don't do the research. They don't understand the financials like that said, underpin, yeah, underpin their businesses. So it's a real, like it's a real issue. It's not easy to start another business from the scratch. As it is now, people will be expecting something to change. But if it doesn't change, you will see start looking at ways to revive your businesses. Think there's a lot of money. They say, my co-finance is not my co-ordinator. Talk about my fool, you're not attacking me. Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. I'm a real boy, I'm a real boy. I'm a real show. I'm a real show. I'm a short in a potential. I'm a real girl, I'm a real girl. 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 The economic situation of the country is not helping matters at all. People are crying. The, the rate of sales are so poor. The rate of turnover, very, very poor, compared to what it used to be when the economy was in a better condition. Presently, people find it difficult to cover their cost of transportation to and fro to their, to their various offices. 
man, no what about the change business? Ni am balowo lowo lowo le change business. Olowo nlowo si ni awa tali kare npo si ni kolon sha no wa. There's a whole lot of things I actually love to do, but you know the economy now is funny. So you just have to make do with what you have to raise the little capital you can get. So there's a lot of business I can actually that me personally would like to invest in, but you just have to raise cash for it. So for now, you make do with what you have. Right now, we are expecting the president or the uh, this this government to at least disburse money into the economy, in which he said he has disbursed, uh, disbursed about 30, 30 or 350 billion or so into the economy, which I think it, it will affect the lives of the masses. We need a stable economy, fluctuation of the dollar, the currency fluctuation. You, you, cannot say, you cannot buy a particular item now and say this particular price will be there in the next two days. As you are buying, you don't know what the dollar rate is. You don't know what the dollar rate will be of uh, 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 what the dollar rate will be the next day. So it is dicey. Okay, that was passionate, right? And, um, <laughs> I love that woman. Exactly. I mean, she was really out there. <laughs> but I, I, I heard a lot of things from every um, everyone that spoke to to us on the streets, and you could tell that there are different positions in their businesses and a lot of them seem to be going towards because i heard the the lady talking about microfinance banks. banks yeah madam maybe you should try to approach someone else your business really might not need a microfinance bank not because you generally because of the kind of business you're doing you need cash flow mm. you need something to just stop gap between when you get your goods to when you sell them Maybe you might look at an overdraft. I mean, that, that, that would be able to help 30 to 90 days, help you just roll around the business. And you could do that with your cash flow if you're doing a good cash flow. But the problem is, does she have records? True. Does she have even, you know, a history with the bank exactly. to be able to get the overdraft? And overdrafts are still relatively expensive. I think that most people don't realize that debt might not be great for their business because Aha. they don't have positive cash flow. So after you've paid back the interest, do you have positive cash flows to support that, that debt? Kind of business. More likely no, you know, than yes. But what other options, options do you think and they should again, explore? There's, um, I think the, the biggest point is that we need to start seeing that there is debt, the debt route and there's the equity, equity route. route. Now the equity route is basically look at your business like a, uh, a cake, right? A big round, nice chocolate cake, <laughs> right? But that cake cut in half uh, and there's 50% on this side, 50% on this side. Just so look at your business from that perspective. So your business is like a cake, right? So you offer someone, an investor, a part of it as their investment into your business. So you're asking the person for maybe 10 million naira, and you're saying, I'm gonna give you half of this cake. Mm. So whatever this business makes and it's it, in terms of profit, I will give you 50% as your, your part business, of the cake, yeah. right? So, um, and investors come in various forms and sizes. They're, they're the angel investors who come from anybody from your relatives to proper angel investors who are institutional. And then they're the venture capitalists who come in and give you money. And they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. they, they predominantly in Nigeria focus more to the dot-com businesses. Those businesses that are on the internet, they kind of like those ones better. <laughs> Yeah, they like I think the main better. thing, though, is that with debt and equity, you're definitely giving up something. Like, so with debt, you have to pay high interest. With equity, you're, you're giving, giving up, up part control. of your business. Exactly. Yeah, control of your business. And I business. find that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with that. But I like to say that it's better to have 10% of Boom. 100 million Boom. than 100% of zero. But they're, yeah. they're, they're the intervention funds by um, the Central Bank, Bank of Industry. And basically, that is the government coming out to say, all right, there is a chunk of money yeah, for you guys. So if you need a loan to do your business, come and get it from us at lower the lower interest, interest rates. Rate. And it's digits, supposed to be yeah. um, easier to get. Supposed to be. <laughs> I have my opinions about intervention yeah. funds. I feel like they're a great idea on paper, but in terms of the operational aspect of it, they haven't quite gotten it right. So I know a lot of entrepreneurs who have applied for those um funds but can't access them because of the administrative issues. So I think that it's all well and good to announce these 
like hundreds of million naira, you know, intervention funds, but they really need to look at the operational side of it. So how is it being dispersed? Do people, yeah. is it, maybe it's not competitive enough for the banks, so they're not really that interested in, in you know, dispersing them. So they really need to look at the operational side of it. And really for, for, what, it to be effective. for whatever business you're doing, right, you just need to get out there and know the kind of funding that is available to you. To you. There are grants out there, there are venture capitals out there looking for who to give money. Bank of Industry is looking for who to give money from across from, from sectors of entertainment, fashion, mm. agriculture. CBN is given an intervention fund. Uh, yeah, that is true. You still... know, and I think the main thing as well is entrepreneurs. You have to, I know Nigeria is such an amazing place. There's so many creative entrepreneurs with fantastic ideas, but we need to really focus on execution. An investor or a bank wants to know that you're going to be able to execute that idea. So you need to think really hard about the financials that underpin your business, what's your business model, so how is it going to make money, what kind of revenue streams, what's, a, what's the cost structure, your cash flows, that kind of thing. If you don't know what your profit margin is, if you don't know what the percentage of the market um, your targeting is or your customer acquisition strategy, no bank or no investor is going to look at you. So I think we need to spend more time being prepared so that when we do get in front of um, a financial opportunity or a financing option, you are going to you know stand out from the person who doesn't really know and I think what their on, numbers are. Um, my my final note would be let's try not to focus so much on the money, right? Mm. Uh, focus on the what you resourceful. Exactly. Focus on what you're offering to the customer. We've heard several, several examples of uh, businesses in Nigeria where the lenders actually come to ask uh, ask the entrepreneur, do you need money once you invest in your <laughs> when business? When well. <laughs> exactly, because you've, you've been able to crawl out of that point of doubt to where, when everybody is really sure that this business is going to turn a profit. Exactly. So that's what you need to be working towards. Show everybody beyond doubt that you can turn a profit and money will come. And I think it's important to be resilient as well. I went to this conference in New York last year and I heard this female entrepreneur stand up and say that basically she had approached 148, 150 um, wow. investors and 148 said no to her. But she kept going. Two eventually said yes, but 148 investors said no to her. And I, it got me thinking, A, do we have 150 funding options in Nigeria? B, um, how many people, How many would, people continue? would continue before they give up? So we need to stay resilient. That person needs to start a business. <laughs> How to be resilient. How to be resilient, <laughs> you know. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Analyze This. Let's continue the conversation on social media at Ndani TV. The hashtag is Analyze This. And you can follow me on Instagram at Smart Money RSF. My handle is at 2G Andrews. If you're an SME or an entrepreneur out there, you've been able to find creative ways to access finance, do let us know. And also, if you're struggling to get access to finance, do also let us know. Till next time, my name is 2G Andrews. I am RSL Ogu. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Files, aka Files the Bad Guy. Well, in today's lesson, I will teach you how to subscribe to the Indani TV channel. All you have to do is click on this. So simple, straightforward.